Hey, I'm Edie and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. Edie, for starters, uh, I just want to tell you, like last Friday, I was, you know, I wrapped up my day, hopped on to Instagram just to like scroll a little bit. And then someone had posted a clip of your video. And then that's what really just got me hooked. Um, so uh, Friday night, I was just listening and watching the music video over and over. And I was like, this girl is insane. Um, yes. So congratulations Thank with you. such an epic debut uh, single. Stop Buying Diamonds is insane. Um, talk to me about that creative process um, in creating this song. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much, by the way. That seriously means so much. Um, you know, I've spent since I was 12, that was when I really started kind of my, uh, my proper pursuit of um, a music career, I guess. And that's when I really started writing music. Um, and I've always loved music. And I discovered that when I was six, when I went to my first co uh, concert, which was Lady Gaga concert. And so um, I think when I started writing music, it was always one of the things of like, well, shit, what do I write about? I don't really, I'm kind of, you know, I'm experiencing all these different things and felt like it, it was a bifurcation. I had to pick the right thing to write about. And um, then I started doing sessions and it was a very awkward situation. Um, and I didn't really know how to communicate with people and just meeting people and then jumping into a session and like having to spill out everything about yourself. And um, then one day I walk into a session with a man named Justin Tranter, um, who is uh, my, he's my primary collaborator, but um, you know, we work so well together and everything feels, you know, we work so harmoniously well together. And so the second I went into that session, I knew like, okay, music is so much more than just writing about the right thing. It's, it's writing about what you're passionate about and writing about stuff that you love and that you, your heart needs to get out. Um, and so uh, this was a couple months into writing with Justin and uh, we were in the studio with Justin, obviously, and then Matt Mann and Robin, who are two musical geniuses from Sweden, they're icons. Um, and so it was interesting. We had been writing for a week at that point altogether um, in this beautiful studio in West Hollywood. And um, this was during, it wasn't the year the Woolsey fires, it was the year afterwards, but there were, you know, massive fires going on around LA. Um, and my, it was funny, my mom drops me off at the studio and she's like, okay, guys, I got to go. We may be evacuated because the fire, um, you know, the fire just crossed uh, Route 23 and, so I've got to go, but, you know, I'll be back later. And so, you know, all this crazy shit's going down and everybody's still in their offices and we're in the studio just trying to write a song. And it felt so unnatural. It felt like we had to be doing something. Um, and so that, you know, the day before we wrote this amazing song and then the next day we were kind of like, you know what, like there's so much pressure. Let's just write something that's really fun and easy going. And then of course, we came upon, um, I ended up coming across the main guitar riff in the song. And um, once we came upon that, we were like, oh, this is perfect. And then Justin mentioned this article that the headline was Generation Z ruins the economy for not buying diamonds. And we are like, what? That doesn't even make sense. That's, that's not, how is that even, that doesn't even, that's not plausible. It doesn't make any sense. Um, and so we were, you know, our original idea of like just having fun and relax immediately turned into us being enraged about this article and needing to write about this thing um and so that was that was what catalyzed the whole song and um originally it was this very Joni Mitchell-esque song and um Matt Mann and Robin took the production to a whole nother level and um we're so happy with how it turned out and um it's I'm so proud of it and it's amazing that's amazing that that riff was what kind of kick-started this um because you know watching the video or even listening to the song um that riff pretty much sets the tone to the whole to the whole track and um I I I don't know. I was just blown away with that. Like, talk to me a little bit more about like your writing process though. Like, um, and, and what that was like with you and Justin, like, do you feel like, um, there was a lot of, there was a lot of learning involved for you or do you feel like you just kind of naturally had that writing in you? For sure. Um, it's interesting. I was actually watching a video on John Lennon the other day and, um, he mentioned that writing is almost like, um, being a medium in a sense it, it's almost when 
when a song is right, you can always force yourself to write a song and sit down and be like, okay, I'm going to write a song. But there's a certain moment where you're writing a song and then the song takes over you and it starts just flooding out of you. And you are just the, the means in which that song comes out of. And that was almost what this song was. It was, we were sitting there and the first thing that came to my mind was I'd like to apologize for my generation. And it was just like, it was just right then and then, and it all came flooding out from the first verse to the second verse. And then we sat down and it felt so right for the melody um, to go along with the guitar melody and the chorus of so damn old, like that had to follow the guitar melody and everything just fit so well. And it felt so good. And it was, it was one of those moments where it was just, you know, we were just trying to keep up with the song at that point. It wasn't like we were sitting there trying to find the perfect words. It was, we're trying to keep up with where the song is going and we're just following the song's lead. And that was, that was one of those moments, one of those super magical transrational moments. Do you feel like that riff also kind of helped you find your cadence when it came to like singing the lyrics, just because there's so many highs and lows, but it's like, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's just so smooth throughout. Oh, for sure. Thank you. Um, it definitely did. I think if, if we didn't, if there was one note that was different about the, the guitar melody, I think the, the whole song could have gone a totally different route. So I think, you know, that guitar melody was a crucial, um, crucial part of how the song formed and where it went. Why did you feel like this was like the perfect introduction uh, to your, to your uh, music project? I just think it's the biggest artist statement, lyrically, musically, you know, I don't, I don't see a lot of artists coming out of the gate with a, a big ass guitar solo and just this insanely large, um, dynamically large, lyrically large piece of work. And it's something that I just felt so good about. And it, it felt like me, it was very, you know, sarcastic and witty um, lyrically. And you hear that also with the music and you hear that with the drums and the guitar solos and, the when the guitars double and from the harmonies everything felt like me it really just felt like it epitomized me in that very moment and uh, it just felt so right now you know watching the video like your your stage presence is just insane um it doesn't thank you it doesn't tell me like oh she's 17 and this is her first single <laughs> like it tells me like you've been in this industry for a very long time and, and you've experienced you know from touring to like live shows and everything how did you, how were you able to be the person you are today in that, you know, for that video and feel so comfortable on that stage? Do you feel like um, your years of like School of Rock kind of prepped you for that um, performance that, that we see on this video? Totally. I think, you know, it's kind of funny is um, when I was younger, I was so beyond shy. I was so reserved. I and that's that's honestly an understatement I my parents would go out of town for work and I would literally hide my closet I had a stash of snacks in my closet like in a certain crevice um so that my babysitter couldn't find me and I could just survive all day without having to go out and I'd have like water and chips and snack it was great but I was so beyond reserved and so when I first got on school of rock performance felt really awkward because it was when and when I was younger I used to love going around my room just dancing and singing for myself but then the second there was a camera it felt really awkward and it felt like I had to go back to being that like reserved person and so slowly as as time went on I found that kind of serenity and that equilibrium of being in front of a camera and then being that person that's just in her room being alone and dancing and singing and doing her whole thing um and so I think being on School of Rock really helped me kind of uh kind of crack that layer a bit and and let what was inside of myself really shine through I don't if I didn't do school of rock I don't think I would have the stage presence that I that I have today I think and how did you kind of discover yourself as you know because one thing is like doing the acting and then another thing is kind of being your own persona for your own music and for your own performance which coincidentally you also have four different personas on this video so how did you kind of like discover who you are as as an artist for sure um that's kind of a loaded question and that i don't think we ever discover who we are i don't think that that's i think and this is something that i've always really struggled with because people are always like how do you find who you are how do you uh, discover that person how did mm -hmm. you feel able to 
express this person who you found and it's always been stigmatized as this destination and like you you work you work you work then you find yourself and that's it and it really that really impacted my mental health because I got to a point where I felt really good about everything you know from how I dressed how I talk to how I write to the music that I like and then it for a year after that I kind of sent me catapulting down the wrong way because I kept trying to go back to being that person that felt right. And I kept trying to go back and I was holding myself back instead of just releasing myself and saying, this feels good right now. And I'm going to do that right now. And I'm going to express myself right now. It's not a destination. It's embracing the journey every single step of the way, even as cheesy as that sounds. That's really how I look at it. And it's, and what's beautiful, I think about the music video is that you can be four different people and that's totally okay. And you could have the punk bitch in the corner and you can have the lead singer who's just like super like glamorous and chic and very present. And then you could have the drummer in the back who just doesn't care. And you could have the guitarist over here and you can have different facets of yourself and you should embrace all those facets of yourself, even if they are different personas, but they're all the same person and that's all you should embrace each aspect of yourself and not try to discover that one version of yourself because I think that's really restricting in a sense. And um, yeah, sorry, that was totally, I totally went on a little rant there, but yeah, I think it's totally a journey. I don't think it's a a full discovery moment. Um, I think we're always searching and we're always going to be searching. So might as well just embrace it every step of the way and just fully express that in any way that you feel fit. Do you feel the same way in this, the type of sound, the type of music that you that you work on as well? Totally. I think our our bodies are really just a, a means of transportation for music to get out. And I mm. think it's super easy and it's writing a song can be very overwhelming when you sit down and you're like, OK, and you think of an idea and you're like, oh, yeah, that's perfect. Then you write it down. And you're like, ah, oh, you know what? You know what? Um, this, this word doesn't, this word's gonna, I don't, people aren't gonna like this word. And it's so easy to fall into that trap. And um, I think you just, you have to let it flow and you just have to express yourself in that moment. And maybe there's something that's amazing in that song. And then there's something that's total garbage in the other half of that song. And you can literally just pick it apart and put in a new song. And that's what's so beautiful about it is it yeah. isn't an end all be all. It's, you know, and the same thing with life. It's, just because you wore an outfit one day doesn't mean that that defines you. You can wear a totally different outfit with a totally different look, totally different eye makeup, totally different hairstyle. And that doesn't define you either. These are all just you expressing yourself in different ways at different times. And each day it's going to be different. I like that. Like you've really, you've really thought about this. Like it's not just like, I'm just saying whatever comes out of my mouth. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so now that, you know, we've got to experience your debut single. Um, I honestly, I need more music from you because this is not enough for me. <laughs> so, you know, what, what are your plans now moving forward now that, you know, you see that your music is something that your fans are also asking for more. So um, are you, also like back in the studio working on more material or do you want to let this song kind of like live its life for for a while before you jump into something else um well all i'm gonna say is i've been writing for the last two years so it's not the only trick i've got up the sleeve at least for (laughs) this for the for the next year i've everything's been prepared over the last two years so it's not the only thing coming (laughs) And lastly, how did Justin challenge you in the studio, whether it was vocally, whether it was uh, in the production, whether it was like your guitar, your insane guitar um, skills, or even in the writing process? Um, I think what's so amazing about working with Justin is his willingness to just do. Um, We can sit down and, and we can be writing a song and if I say something, he'll just be like, oh yeah, that's perfect, put it in. And and it really got me out of that mentality of overthinking every single line because it's so easy to do. And so we can write and you know, I could throw out an idea and boom, it's in. And he can throw out an idea and we can just be like, yeah, great, perfect. And it's not, there's no overthinking and it's just you know, saying what's in the moment and what feels right. And that I think was really, it definitely pushed me forward as a writer and it really challenged me and it, um, it totally advanced me um, as far as just my ability to articulate my thoughts in song form. Um, 